Hey everybody, I want to show you the steps I took to take this still image and turn it into this animated video. So what's really cool about this workflow is the AI person you saw in the clip does not exist, which is pretty crazy. So I'm going to show you how I did that. Um, I also want to show you what happens if you actually use a person in the scene. So let's get started. So right now I'm in D5. You can do this with any rendering engine, does not matter. And so there's a couple things to point out. I'm going to be using Runway. You can use Kling, you can use whatever. It's all the same stuff. Before we send the rendering off to become an animation, there's a couple settings you should change before we do that. So just make sure that under your camera settings, your aspect ratio is set to something that the engine supports. So Runway, for example, supports 16 by 9, 4 by 3, 1 by 1, and then the inverse ones for your portrait. So I have this set to 4 by 3 really important you do this otherwise you're gonna have to crop the image and you can crop it in runway but you know if the, the image is really important and you don't want to lose anything keep that in mind so once that's done swing over to runway and right here this is image to video in runway this is using gen 4 which was recently released and i'm going to be using the gen 4 model not gen 4 turbo i found based on my testing gen 4 works a lot better it takes a lot longer, but the results are much nicer. Okay. So make sure you use gen four, not turbo. Okay. So then I'm going to go over here where it says drop an image and then select an asset. And I'm going to grab this living room rendering. And this is the one without the person. Okay. And now what I have to do is I need to give it a prompt. So basically a description of what I want to happen. If you're new to all this, I highly recommend you click view guide right here, and this will bring you to their documentation. And what I really like about the documentation is they actually expose how the model reads your prompts. And really to save you some time, it comes down to four different factors. It's subject motion. So what is the person or the thing doing? So if you have a person, describe that here they're using this animated bull thing right so they're saying this thing's moving it's running across the desert green to green right then camera motion so what is the camera doing and in my testing this is probably the most important thing because this controls if it's a a dolly or a pan or a zoom so make sure you put something here and you know we'll put it in the prompt when we do it and then scene motion this is if you want to add extra effects. We don't need that for our type of work. And then the style of descriptors, if you want it to be cinematic or not. But really for, I think, arc viz, subject motion and camera motion are going to be the most important ones. Highly recommend you spend some time on this guide. There's also some like really great examples at the bottom of like how prompts can completely change the image into an animation. Like this just turned into like a rock guy. And this is the Brooklyn Bridge collapsing on fire crazy so anyways check that out when you have time so let's talk about describe your shot so i'm going to do a slow cinematic camera zoom right because i just want a slow movement right and then i'm just gonna do comma casual woman walking through kitchen okay and you know, I mentioned earlier about the uh, the aspect ratio. Check that out. This is aspect ratio right here. So 16 by 9 by six, 9 by 16, 1 by 1. So if you use that, you're fine. If you don't, it's going to get cropped. You can also do a further crop in here. So you can click that as well. Anyways, you could also add some settings. Right now, I think because Gen 4 was just released, you can only tweak whether or not it's a fixed seed. And the seed... What's useful about it is like if there's a style you like, you can keep iterating or riffing on that style and it's not going to give you something completely new. Um, in the future, they'll probably add camera motion controls like we have in Gen 3, but for now, super bare bones. And then this right here is the amount of seconds. I'm going to do five seconds because, again, this is a test. I don't want to waste credits, so you can do up to 10 seconds. So I'm going to hit generate. And while that's baking, because right now this is a queue, which is really nice, I'm going to send over the guy who is pouring the wine. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to delete this image. I'm going to select an asset. And now I've got this guy pouring wine. And I'm going to change casual woman to just man pouring wine. And I'm going to hit generate. So now I've got two things. This is the queue. And what's nice is it'll also show you up here. And this might not seem so important, but when you do a lot of these, 
which you will. The reality of this is like, it's super cool, but you do spend a lot of time regenerating and trying to get it right. Cause there might be like one second that's like a little weird. And you're not going to want that. So this lets you kind of scan through all the different versions. I mean, I've had a couple of generative sessions where I go all the way down here because it's just not right. And that's, that's one of the issues with AI. Like it's really cool. It's really powerful. It's just, you don't have super high control and some weird things could happen. Why would you do this over animating in like D5 or another real-time render engine? Well, I think this is still going to be much faster. Although uncontrollable and unpredictable, it's still going to be faster because think about it. in a render engine, I need to place and I need to key the asset. I also have to make sure that the asset does what I need it to do. If this is something that's like far out and there's not an asset that will do that, this is a really good solution. But let's say I animate it, I key it in, uh, in D5, then I have to render out each frame, right? If I'm doing, let's say like 30 frames per second and each frame is costing me like a minute, right? That's 30 minutes of just like baking on animation. And that doesn't include the prep time. So we've got the slow cinematic zoom with a casual woman and let's hit play. And there she is. And she's just walking around. And that's it. So there's a couple things I do want to point out, which is like conceptually like insane. And I don't think people appreciate it enough, but pay attention right here and right here. And then look at the starting image. Look right here and here. This did not exist in the existing image. Okay. This was added in AI. Okay. So if you want full control, you want to make sure that that piece of whatever you're showing is in frame. Otherwise it will make it up. Okay. So this, for example, they gave me a much thicker window frame because again, it made it up this on the right. Let's see if we can get more, more details. You know, we've got like a big window here and different landscape from the actual project. Let me swing over to D5 and just show you if I were to move forward, this frame would actually not kick in. And this is a completely different outside area. And I'm not saying it's bad. My, my point here is to convey that this is generated. Okay. It's not real. Okay. So I hope you understand what I'm, I'm saying. Like it's making up details, which could be an issue or not, but anyways, this looks really cool. Let's go see, um, wine man over here and he's pouring wine into his bottle. So this is what I'm talking about. Like it's really cool. Could it be, but it could be unpredictable. It also interpreted my camera zoom in the wrong direction. Right? So then this is where you get into like the game of reiterating. So then what I would do here is I could go to reuse settings, right? It's going to throw my starting image back in here with the prompt. And then I would have to add more details. So I would say slow cinematic camera zoom forward. And then I would say man pouring wine bottle in glass and we'll see what that does. So while that's baking, you can see that that's getting longer. So now I can click one and it goes there. If there's a generation you really like, you can bookmark it, save it. You can also upscale it. So this will bring it over to 4k, which is really nice because now you're going to have higher res and this will make it blend a little bit better. Let's say you're doing you know, a 4k animation out of like D five, right? If you do this, this will blend a little bit better because now you've got like an AI component, still the same resolution. You don't need to worry about scaling it up and it being noisy. Uh, so you've got that. There's also this expand function. So, you know, I was using that example of like the stuff on the side and the top, like not being realistic, but if I needed even more, you know, just generate it on the fly, expand would expand my canvas, right? So if I did that, I can tell it which way I want it to go and it would generate. So pretty cool. Um, and then restyle if I wanted to change this style. So like, I like the image, but I want it to be like cartoony or stylized. So now that we've got the revisions baked out, let's see what we've got here. So I'm gonna play this. So this is slow cinematic zoom forward. So it's a little bit too forward and that's not super realistic. And let's see the other. So that wine bottle just appeared and that wine glass is floating. So this is kind of like, <laughs> this is like a good note, uh, just to kind of like uh, summarize, like the tech is like really cool and exciting, but you are going to run into situations where things get weird. 
as you can see here and you're going to get in this situation where you just have to keep regenerating and it's it's kind of like this balance of efficiency because like you know is, would it be quicker for you to find like a 3d asset of like a wine guy just like pouring the wine in rather than generating from scratch you know yes or no it's just like there might be a cost with trying to find an asset like that and that could be you know anywhere from like 30 to like 300 dollars with the with how animated models are so like there's definitely like a cost savings with trying to do this via ai but you're not going to have the control that you may need like i think architecturally everything looks like really nice and it's like beautiful but you are going to get those weird details so anyways that's really the uh, the workflow it's like you've got to generate out an image you've got to plug it in to the text to video engine of your choice give it a prompt make sure you review the guide just so you understand the best practices and then you can render out and then you can upscale so nothing too crazy but yeah there are two ways of using this either generating people from scratch she didn't exist or using someone in the image as is um as you can see here we had a little bit more success with someone just walking rather than doing something a little bit more technical interested to see what you come up with if you have any questions leave it in the comments below and as always please leave a like and subscribe see you next time